All right, you guys, welcome back to the channel. Um, I do have to apologize for my last video, which kind of looked at both Intel and um, AMD at the same time, and I thought that was going to be long and confusing. So this time, we're going to just focus on the Intel um, av uh, available options for the Inspiron 14 Plus this time. Uh, this time, um, let's have a look at it. Let's have a look at the some of the benchmarks and some of the weird options on Dell, but it's on Dell, so you have you can have a look at it on the website. So anyways, the, the it seems that the base configuration of the um, Inspiron 14 Plus laptop is 949. That's not bad when you consider that it has um, <laughs> some of the newer um, processors that are out. Um, so these are 2024 processors. So the first thing that we see is the option between the Ultra 7 um, Intel Core processor 155H 16 cores, 22 threads, and between, um, of course, that between the Ultra 9 processor, which is 24 megabytes of cache, um, 16 cores, 22 threads, but runs at what seems to be a higher clock rate, clock speed rate. Um, but let's start with this, the, the core one. So the core, the, the core 7, I well, had a look at the pass mark for this, and this was 24,000, which is not bad. Um, don't let now now, the, now this is just the cpu performance all right so the thing about this and i am I, I i'm making a video as well about npus is that these uh because they're the new the newer technology these also come with npus which is newer processing units and that means that this should in theory be able to run ai better and you know ai is becoming a new thing now so um that's the difference between i think the older models I don't think the, the older models that we reviewed, even if it's, if it says new Inspiron 14 2-in-1s, for example, I don't think those came with the NPU processors. You have to have the Ultra, as far as I know, the Intel Core Ultra processors to be able to run, a well, to be able to run AI faster or more efficiently on your laptops, okay? So that's the one edge up by purchasing, you know, this this um these newer processors. So anyway, so we have... um. The Ultra Core, which is not, as I said, not bad. Twenty four thousand is pretty good. As anything over ten thousand is 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 perfect for um, basic studies and school and stuff like that. Anything over twenty thousand is pro is probably good enough to do like video rendering, um, photography rendering, and that kind of thing. It's not going to be instant, but because processors require some time to do work, but it's going to be much better than something that is under ten thousand for sure. All right. So I would always recommend if you could get something over fifteen, you'd probably be happy in most cases uh, with the exception of if it's gaming if it's gaming you're looking for over 20,000 the processor is probably better if you need to do both gaming and recording of your game at the same time that kind of thing all right so uh, one of the things that was kind of strange um, is that if you choose Windows 11 home which should kind of be the standard thing it asks you to change the monitor which makes no sense like I don't know what Dell was doing here. Maybe it's it's maybe it's not related to tech as opposed to what they have built, right? So remember they are manufacturing as well. So they manufacture their laptops a specific way, and I think that's what's happening here. So when you use when you choose Windows Eleven Home, I did the price actually go up? The price looked like it actually went up. So we started off actually at nine forty nine, and with Windows Home, it went the price went up by a hundred dollars us okay so let's switch it back and let's see if we could switch back yeah okay right so strangely enough you get windows 11 pro which costs more right with the core ultra 7 um but if you choose the lower quality monitor right so this is the standard specs and we go through this so you have windows 11 pro that's kind of good you get a hundred dollars at something that is $100, you get it for actually cheaper in a sense. But you'll give up having maybe the higher quality money. We'll get to that. So it comes with 16 gigabytes of RAM. <laughs> in terms of 16 gigabytes of RAM, you should be totally fine with that. Um, for most cases, Office, Word, Documents, this should be a breeze. This should be totally fine. Um, the thing about it is that it comes with two sticks of 8 gigas, gigs of which is fine as well. This dual channel memory should be fine. And it comes with, it, it's, it's DDR5, which is wonderful, with 5X, which is wonderful. Oh, this is actually faster than the, um, the, the ones that we previously reviewed because the ones that we previously reviewed, that's the new Inspiron 14 and also the two-in-one. They only came with, I think, 5,400 MTS. So this is a whole thousand MTS faster. 
that does not mean it's going to be a thousand times faster. That just means you probably, if you're working on heavy workloads, you will see perhaps a 5%, maybe 5% difference, you know, in, in terms of performance, you will get that out, hopefully out of it in best case scenario, okay? And um, it comes, it doesn't come with an option really for the storage. You only get the standard storage of one ter a terabyte, which is totally fine. Um, just remember that these M2 PCI E NVMe drives, they still, you know, I mean, technology is still coming to the point of reliability for these drives. They're very fast, but like, don't put your life on these. If you're going to have these laptops, make sure to have cloud backup just in case, because this could last you a month. It could last you a year. It could last you three years, two years. At any point in time, these things could fail, right? That's just how technology is now, right? So um, something to keep in mind. It comes with Intel Arc graphics. There's not much I know about the Intel Arc graphics, but I want to assume here a little bit that the Intel Arc graphics um, is going to be um, fairly decent, uh, fairly uh, uh, probably better than what we have before. All right, um, so let me have a look at, let's go down. Uh, I wonder if I can look at benchmarks with Intel Arc graphics. Um, let's see if we could go <laughs> Intel Arc graphics versus Iris. Yeah. That would be a good example. So this is the previous um, examples that we had before. CADGP benchmarks. All right, so quickly having a, a look at non-specific things here. So the older laptops that, well, the ones with the older processors, they had the, usually the Iris XE. Um, and as you can see from this, looking at the dates and stuff like that, you see that the, um, the Arc one, which is the one that we're reviewing here, is actually a lot better. So it is six, seven, seven percent better than that. It should be because I mean, it was really um, the Iris X is really poor in terms of graphics. Um, what would be what 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 would be nice is if there was a way to look for maybe like um, I think we have to probably change this to. I don't want to spoil this video too much, but um, what would be nice is to look at the Intel Arc versus like, trying to remember, versus AMD. I don't see like a okay. So AMD Radeon. Um, let's see if we could get like Radeon graphics, Radeon Vega eight. Yeah, if we could get to look at that, that would help out a lot. All right, so here we go. Okay, all right. So we see the graphics here seem to be. Um. Yeah, Vega eight. It's really. That actually, yeah, okay. 5000 iGPU. Right. So, yeah, I mean, in terms of what we see here, it seems that this Arc A770 is actually, performance seems to be really, really good. Um, it's higher end, all right? So, at least Intel is doing something good with their graphics, which usually AMD has more of a, uh, a head on in terms of um, when it comes to mobile mobile and integrated graphics into the processor all right so coming back here so in terms of the graphics you should this is a this is probably a better option if you could afford if you could afford it go with these versus maybe the previous generations that was out there now it also comes with 14 um this is the 14 um display 2.2 k right so it doesn't it, it can't play full 4k but it could play um, 2K, right? And then it could go 60 frames per second, 60 hertz. And 300 nit, not too bad, not too good. As I probably explained before, it's probably not going to be super great um, in the sun, but it should be perfectly fine indoors. And um, as I said, this is the sort of lower quality display compared to the other one that's available. And you'll get the US backlit keyboard. Um, and of course, there's options to go higher end. So, that's what is available for 949.99, so $950 US dollars. Now, if we go up to the higher one, which is the Ultra 9, 
it forces you to upgrade to the 32 gigs of RAM and the, the higher quality um, display, as well as you get a, you, you have to choose the US backlit co-pilot keyboard. All right, so let's accept that and let's see what it looks like in terms of the pricing. So the pricing jumps dramatically, right? We see from $950, it went up to $1,400. So that's a, a big jump, right? And so the pass mark for the Ultra 9 is marginal, 28, 7, 20 versus 24. Yeah, I mean, okay, it's not marginal. It's relative in terms of the pricing, maybe. But like, I wonder if it's worth all of that unless you like top of the line doing ai stuff and that kind of thing maybe maybe it might not be with the price the, the, the price but if you have the money and you want to it's fine you know all right so um what you get though is you also get double the ram right so you don't double the memory which is good 32 gigs is probably better it means that you could run more vms you could run more larger games that kind of thing it seems that this will be a gaming laptop it could it could work as a gaming laptop all right and um <laughs> of course you get the the, the newer monitor when you choose this option, which is, uh, when I say the newer monitor, the newer technology monitor, I would assume because this is 2.8K. So it still can't, it still can't play back at 4K. Like you could run up a, a 4K video perhaps from the laptop, but it, all you will see is up to 2.8K on, on the screen. That's what that means, right? Okay. And it does have the same nits in terms of brightness. So what you're really getting is that extra, what, 0.6K out of paying that amount so something to think about i don't know if i'd recommend it um i probably wouldn't considering the price it's not really a sweet spot for me but with that being said it's really this video is really designed for you right so um those are the two options that are available for the intel new inspiron and let's have a look at the tech specs really really quick as i close up this video so the tech specs so um, this is for the latest one with the Ultra 9, right? Do we go through all of this already? Um, and what I want to look at is the HDMI port. So there's a HDMI 1.4 and there's an asterisk. So we're going to have to read that. There's the Intel Thunderbolt, which I don't use, but that maybe people will be using that. There's the two USB Type A's. So the Type A's um, are the standard USB ports as far as I remember. So like uh, what I mean by that is you should see big ports. Yeah, so this port here. It does look like it has a type c port but i don't know if that's just if it's misleading or not um i do see the type a and i do see type c but i don't really see here it doesn't really say type c here which makes me wonder this is a problem sometimes with purchasing stuff from dell or from online like sometimes it just don't mention it did they mention it anyway i just want to make sure that i give them fair justice to what i'm seeing yeah it doesn't seem that it's mentioned so or maybe, yeah, type A is different from type C. Yeah, so I don't know. Um, universal audio jack. And they say, so they're saying with the HDMI 1.4, the maximum resolution over the HDMI is actually 1080. So there's no 4K and no 2K output, which is a bummer, right? Because like you want your HDMI to be able to output 2K and 4K if you have an extra monitor. So something to keep in mind here is that according to what they're saying, you don't get that. All right. And that kind of is an absolute deal breaker for me. Um, I would I like the option of having 4k output and it's not something when I purchase a laptop and I invest in a laptop it should have that okay um and I I would I would I would actually I'm gonna I'm gonna just drop the specs back down because I don't think it's gonna change um yeah it didn't change right so it's it's it seems that that's just something that Dell seems to I don't know if it's their motherboard that whatever motherboard they use from whichever manufacturer that it just doesn't do. 4K output. It comes with an SD card reader, and it comes with, um, of course, a micro, um, not micro, yeah, a, a webcam and microphone. Which there's no way to tell. Even if they say FHD 1080p, there's no way to tell really how good a quality this is, unless you probably YouTube and find out if someone else has it, and if they could show you um, what it looks like, or maybe go into a store and purchase this yourself. I, it, it's risky, right? These webcams are really, really risky when it comes to quality and that kind of thing comes with um, battery life of nine hours, 21 minutes, not bad. Not not the best that we've seen, but not bad, right? For the latest one, Wi-Fi 6E, and it comes with Bluetooth 100 watt adapter Type-C. Oh, so maybe, maybe that port is only a Type-C. So the port maybe that we're seeing here, this port here is the charging port. Let me tell you something about this. So I have a laptop, not, not Dell, 
but I have a laptop that used Type C, and that Type C port broke in like in about a year of pulling in, pulling out that kind of thing. So I don't know. I'm a little bit nervous about you know that Type C port, but I do see there might be a possibility this could charge with a barrel jack as well. So if that ever happens, something to look at, something research is whether this could be uh, um, replaced with a barrel jack for for universal charger that kind of thing. Uh, with that being said, that is the Intel options that are available, and I'll be back with another video, hopefully, um, with the Snapdragon version of this um, as well. What, as I mentioned, this has the NPU, so this will help if uh, with the latest Windows 11 that's coming up with Copilot and all of these different options. And um, uh, for for the $950, it's not bad, it's not perfect, because you're not going to get a 4K output, but with that being said, still pretty good laptop for $950. $50. So guys, thank you so much for viewing and I'll see you guys again on another episode where I um, focus on the Snapdragon.